Let's find our seats. <laughs> Good to see your faces this morning. Let's let's open with a word of prayer, okay? <laughs> Lord, we thank you. You know, it's the season where we can stop and we do stop and recognize your goodness in a way that we don't pretty much the whole year. You are so, so good. And so Lord, we just thank you. And this morning, we just offer this time of worship and praise to you. We long to hear from you and just be here in your presence. Lord, would you be glorified this morning, I pray in Jesus' name, amen.
soul and I smell sweet cherry blossoms pouring all their gladness into my soul in winter I believe you in springtime I see you it's so good to be with you my hope has come Lord you make all things new your love is my breakthrough now I sing hallelujah my hope has come now I now I walk Like silver and gold Lord, your faith has taught me to cherish That this life of affliction is not my home In winter, I believe you In springtime, I see you It's so good to be with you My hope has come Lord, you make all things new And I have been tested like silver and gold. Lord, your faith has taught me to cherish that this life of affliction is not my hope. In winter, I believe you. In springtime, I see you. It's so good to be with you. My hope has come. Lord, you make all things new. Your love is my breakthrough. Now I sing hallelujah. My hope has come. Now I'm not going to give in to this mortal frustration. And I'm not going to give death any standing ovation. I will lift my soul, God, with no hesitation. Because between you and me there is no separation In winter I believe you In springtime I see you It's so good to be with you My hope has come Lord you make all things new Your love is my breakthrough Now I sing hallelujah my hope has come, now I sing hallelujah, my hope has Oh
your fault, steal your love from for me. Still, I'm found. He's the night. 
I don't deserve it. Still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Amen. We, have, we believe in the gift of the prophetic and that God speaks to us and gives us words. We have a couple of encouraging words I want to have shared with you today. Um, in my quiet time this morning, after being inundated with Black Friday ads for Christmas, <laughs> and the pressure many of us feel at this time of the year, I want you to receive this word. You are significant. You began in the mind of God. You are His idea, and your life and character development are His workmanship. He designed you. He develops you into his perfectly designed and divine purpose to display his glory and his love. God rejoices in you for you are his child and you are made in his image. You may not see all that he's doing because the world sends you messages based on their standards which are completely arbitrary. And if you don't believe it, remember what the fashions were. A few years ago, some of you can remember some of the crazy fashions that we thought were really good. And the hairstyles. When you look at your old photographs, and you go, what were we thinking? Anyway, <laughs> humans are fickle and they change on a whim. The world system is based upon their ideas of beauty. When you don't measure up to their standards, you feel defeated. And God says to you, I'm not like that. Step into my thoughts, for they are higher. My beauty is eternal. And I call you beautiful, for I created you. I call you complete, for I am completing you. My joy is to see you stepping into your destiny, looking at me, your designer. Turn aside from the opinions of men in this world. They did not create you. They do not love you like I do. Quit resisting me. Be free to be who I made you to be and leave those lower thoughts behind for my thoughts and my ways are higher. Amen. Good morning. A couple weeks ago, Don shared a um, story about how the Lord gives us something as an investment, and He expects us to do business with what He has given to us. And at that time, I thought the Lord gave me a word, uh, actually an acronym, and He said, you're in the CIA. And He said, first of all, the C stands for courageous that if we are to do business, it takes risk. And we need to have courage to step out and to use the giftings that God has given to us. But Joshua 1.9 says, be of good courage because I am with you. And so he wants to remind us that we have courage because he is with us. Second thing is that he wants us to be intentional too many times we say, well, we're just going to let the Lord do it. It's very passive. God wants us to be active. He does not want us to give into the fear of man because that's really what's holding us back. He wants us to be intentional with our interaction with people. He doesn't want us just to hang back. He wants us to be intentional. And the third, the A, is available. It goes along with intentional. Too many times, and I'm guilty of it, <laughs> way more than, than uh, probably anyone here, that my calendar is so packed that I don't have time to breathe, let alone, Lord, I, what do you want me to do today? God wants us to be available. He wants us to have the attitude of, here am I, send me, not there they are, send them. So I encourage you that you are all in the CIA to be courageous, <laughs> intentional, and available. Amen.
you know, I, I love that because it's all about knowing our identity and who we are in Christ and then being intentional and, and to activate what God's put in when, within us. And I know personally in our life, we have a couple of situations where uh, some very difficult situations. And as I was praying for these two different situations, the word uncertainty came to, out of my mouth as I was praying. And uncertainty is doubt, not sure of the outcome, mistrust, and wavering between conclusions. How many of you are wavering between your conclusions? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> what the outcome is going to be. Um, because we, have, we do live in uncertainty. But Romans 8, 31 through 39 says, If God is determined to stand, and I study that scripture, Romans 8, 31 through 39, it's powerful. If God is determined to stand with us, tell me who could be against us. For God proved his love by giving us his greatest treasure, which is his son. Who then is left to condemn us? Certainly not Jesus, for he gave us his life. He conquered death. He conquered uncertainty. Oh, how, so how could Jesus possibly condemn us since he is continually to pray for our triumph? Think about that. Nothing or no one can separate us from God's love. Not only does Jesus pray for us, but the Holy Spirit prays for us. Two divine intercessors are praying for you. Two divine intercessors have got your back. Let that sink in for a moment. Two-thirds of the Trinity are actively engaged for your triumph. They are interceding for you. So in the midst of our uncertainty, in the midst of our doubt, as we waver between our conclusions, we must rest in the truth, which is God is for us. He does not condemn us. He intercedes for us. And today, may God, your Abba, the one whom you belong to, fill you to overflow with uncontainable joy and peace as you trust in Him, as you are His CIA agent, as you walk in your true identity, know that He intercedes because He wants you to triumph as you reach the world for Jesus. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you.
think about what it is when we say we will build our life upon his love. That, that, that we will, um, everything about us, we will, we will rest on um, knowing that he loves me. I can live from that place. I can build my life on that place of just knowing that the one who spoke all of this into existence that we see and experience, we can build our life upon him. We can rest in him. There's, there's no greater hope than him. Amen? Amen. Ah, thanks, Case. Thanks, team. You're amazing. And those who presented the words, thank you. Amazing, amazing. Well, I wouldn't expect anything else than that. It is God, after all. Um, if you're visiting, welcome. We're glad you're here. Um, we're like a big family here. I was just, as we were worshiping, and, and, and as I was thinking this whole week uh, about you guys a lot, um, if you're visiting, we're like a big family. So we just kind of welcome you into our Thanksgiving meal this morning. Be part of us, and if you have any questions, um, I can answer them, or there'll be others that are going to be around. And so now we're going to do some announcements that are ready for us. Let's do it. Hi there, Cecile Cox here, coming to you with the announcements for Sunday, November 25th. For those of you who are still awake after eating all that turkey this week, here's a little something. I'm grateful for the simple things in life, a roof over my head, food, food on, on the, the table, table, bills paid, a home filled with children, and my heart filled with peace. I'm grateful for my son who wakes up singing and dancing. I'm grateful for the home that God gave us this year, impossible without him. I'm grateful for the love around me, a family and, and friends. Friends that journey with me through the ups and downs, for pastors who have my back, and for the many times I saw God express his love through his people. I'm glad for God's faithfulness in the worst of times, reminding us that He is aware and remembers and that He is for us. I'm grateful that even in my darkest moments, God sees when I cannot see, loves, loves when, when I, I cannot can't feel, and He keeps me when I would otherwise be lost. I'm grateful that just when I thought everything had fallen apart, God crashed in with His extravagant love and reminded me He's more than enough. Well, I'm grateful for a mighty God who heals and saves and delivers us today, who doesn't treat me like my sins deserve, but who knows me and bids me to know Him. I am grateful for God's love. I'm grateful for God's love. His no matter what. I'm always with you. Love. Speaking of thankfulness, thanks everyone who signed up to serve at the King's Table Christmas event on December 8th. We will host the King's Table at New Song Church. All the serving spots are full, but if you already signed up, please arrive at 3 p.m. Anyone who signed up for other roles, please arrive at 4. We start cleanup around 8. New Song Church address is in the bulletin. If you brought items for the King's Table event, you can drop these off in the box in the social hall or give them to Lynn Alt or Caitlin Scudder. And speaking of gifts, if this Christmas season is looking a little tight for your family, you know, the shoestring budget, you can sign up to receive Christmas benevolence this year beginning today. Email Caitlin for more details. If you are new here, thank you for choosing to spend part of your Sunday here with us. We have a private area set aside in the social hall if you would like prayer after the service. Take a moment to greet the people around you and have a great Sunday. Bye. I actually don't agree yet because um, I forgot something that never happens, I know. I know. Um, ushers, if you'll come forward, we're going to take up the offering. Um, man, that's why they should never trust me with this stuff. Um, Lord, we thank you. Just this season of Thanksgiving, we, we thank you and we, we honor you and we, we pray that you will be blessed by our giving now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, as we're doing that, uh, just a, another quick announcement. As you remember, last week we have had our Benevolence Sunday, and all of our offering went toward Benevolence, that is um, helping people that 
that are in need throughout the year. And I wanted to give you a, an update on how much came in. Now, look around, there's not a whole lot of people here, uh, very faithful people, but if you can imagine it, almost $29,000 came in. To, to be exact, $28,979. So somebody still owes a little so we can get to 29, okay? So if you wanna write that check, just put on there, benevolence, um, but $28,979, wow. Thank you, it is, that is beyond amazing. It really is. So now, I'm wasting about 30, 20, 15 seconds until all of that is passed. And now if you will get up, greet somebody that you don't know. Look for somebody that you haven't said hi to and introduce yourself, all right? Somebody save me, this guy's talking about the Rams beating the Chiefs. <laughs> Just to let you know, that was all part of the Chiefs' strategy. <laughs> Just in case they meet in the Super Bowl, we wanted to get their, you know, their confidence built up so we could dash it on the rocks. <laughs> all right. What's that? More? You put? You want me to talk about it more? <laughs> Guys, it's so good to have you here. One of the things I do want to encourage you to do is if you're not part of a home group, I would love for you, we would love for you to be part of a home group. It's really where life happens and you get to know people in a really intimate way. Um, two of the people that got up and gave words this morning uh, are home group leaders. So if you would like to be part of their group, search them out. But also Ginger Bolar is our home group person. So if you're interested in a group, um, check out Ginger and, and talk to her about it. I had somebody come to me a couple of weeks ago and say, I never thought I'd be part of a home group. And, um, and now I am, and I, I just absolutely love it. So I um, encourage you to be part of that as well. So this morning we have somebody coming to share with you that has shared one other time before. I didn't get to hear it, and so I insisted, Carl and I insisted that he come back. So um, I want to introduce to you uh, Mr. David Bolar, who's going to share over this one. So Lord, I just thank you for this willing person to come up and share what you have put on his heart. Lord, I pray that everything that you want to say through David's word this morning, that you would say clearly that David would just flow with what you've given him. And Lord, um, put power on these words, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Don. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> um, about 60 years, probably, after the uh, death and resurrection of Jesus, most of the disciples had already died, most of them horrible deaths. And, and John, one of the last guys around, and, and like starts writing letters like 60 years later, I, I kind of wonder if he's not the guy that like held back and he's like, hey, I'll just like stand back here and I'll just, I'll just counsel people for a little bit and uh, <laughs> let all the, all the other people do the talking. And, um, and, and in the end, like, he feels like, hey, I need to say something here. Like, I knew the man. I walked with him. And, and you believers that, like, the Spirit of God has revealed the man to you as he walked in the flesh. That man, and I know that you know him because I knew him. I walked with him. I laid my head on his chest. That's the man that you know. And, and in that place, John says, stay there. Stay there. Abide, and you will not be ashamed. I have a sense that the Lord is calling us to a new season of, of intimacy with Him. That, um, that those of us who have insisted on, on carrying our, our own cross, the idea that like you, you broke it, you bought it, 
and and this this sense that and I, I was sharing with with our home group last week that that we had this this sense I have this sense I don't want to necessarily put it on you but that that the grace of God was basically like like a loan modification and so when when Jesus came. He paid the price for my loan modification so that the payments that I couldn't afford, like, let's see what you can't afford. Right. And, and let's, yes. let's pay based upon that amount. And, and that's, how, that's how we have a tendency to live because we want to earn it. We want to do it. We want to, like, God, you made it so that I can prove myself worthy. Mm 